So it's a great pleasure to introduce Professor uh, Maria do Carmo Pereira Nunes from the Department of Internal Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Federal University of Minas Gerais, and coordinator of the echocardiography sector at the Hospital das Clínicas, UFMG. Uh, Dr. Maria do Carmo graduated in medicine from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. Uh, she made a residency in internal medicine, cardiology, and echocardiography. She completed her master's and doctorate at the postgraduate program Infectious Diseases and Tropical Medicine at UFMG School of Medicine. After, she, was post, uh, she performed a postdoc at the Massachusetts General Hospital from Harvard Medical School in Boston. Uh, she coordinated the American Heart Association Committee to prepare the guidelines on the approach and treatment of patients with Chagas heart disease and the consensus on multimodality imaging in Chagas disease in collaboration with the European Society of Cardiovascular Imaging. She coordinates the echocardiogram of large projects in Chagas disease with international funding, especially in NIH. Uh, she participates in the European Registry of Infectious Endocard Endocarditis and is the principal investigator of a clinical trial sponsored by the Treasury Research Fund in partnership with the researchers from the Mass General Hospital. She is a member of the award panel of the clinical trial conducted in Africa, GOA trial in rheumatic heart disease, and she serves as co-investigator and coordinator of the screening echocardiogram of the Proverb project in partnership with the Children's National Health System in Washington, uh, United States. So Maria do Carmo, um, I've been knowing you by name from your dear friend Val, who we have the pleasure to hear early this morning. And uh, for the last section of our workshop, uh, uh, which the theme is bioimage applied to medical uh, diagnostic, uh, when we were uh, looking for uh, speakers for this section, uh, we talked from, with Tom from, from Hospital das Clinicas, and he was positive. You have to invite Maria do Carmo. So uh, I'm very curious to, to hear you, to know your work, which uh, I, I've been knowing your excellency, uh, as I said, uh, from Val, who likes you a lot. And she says that you are a wonderful collaborator. And uh, today is, a, is a, I think gonna be a fantastic opportunity to get to know you better uh, uh, by your work. And um, I would like to thank you for accepting this invitation to close our workshop. Yes, thank you so much for these kind words. Is uh, Antonio Ribeiro e Valdez is, are my friends, so it's a bias to say. But thank you so much. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in this workshop. I try to show some of our projects related to cardiac imaging. So, uh, as you say, my name is Maria do Carmo from the School of Medicine of Federal University of Minas Gerais and work in Hospital das Clínicas. Uh, our talk before this uh, afternoon is cardiac imaging for evaluation of heart disease in resource limited series. So I will talk about um, okay. uh, rheumatic heart disease, that is a disease of low resource cells. And the cardiac image I'm focus in echocardiography. Rheumatic heart disease is uh, related to throat infection by streptococcus to be of group A that cause acute rheumatic fever with acute cardiac and joint pains, all this uh, acute disease, that long-term consequences valve heart disease, especially mitral and aortic valve, that is responsible for high mortality related to rheumatic heart disease. 
And basically, the three pathogenetic mechanisms are involved in developing of this disease. Oh. With the throat infections by this streptococcus of A group, that leads to an abnormal immune response in individuals with genetic predisposition. And this disease causes mitral valve lesion, especially, and it causes mitral valve regurgitation that the flow and uh, regurgitation back into the left atrium, or sometimes has restriction of the flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. This is causes heart failure, symptoms of stroke, and other complications. It is rheumatic heart disease is still a major public health concern in low to middle income countries, including Brazil, uh, because it's a leading cause of cardiovascular death in children and young adults that are more productive a phase of the life. And the mortality is related to lack of access to timely valvular intervention, especially percutaneous or surgical intervention. And more important, this disease is a preventable disease by treating throat infection. In Brazil, uh, there is a great economic disparities and an unequal distribution of healthy resources and because of that, we have a regional variation in the epidemiology of cardiovascular diseases. We've limited the health awareness and rheumatic heart disease remain a major concern. When we talk about the rheumatic heart disease, it's more important to, to know the clinical spectrum of the disease. We have a borderline disease or some subtle, uh, subtle changes and subclinical valve abnormalities then can progress to clinical disease causing heart failure, stroke that requires surgery for valve replacement and ultimately death related to heart valve disease. It's very important because it's a, as a early death, usually in the largest study in Africa showed that, that the patients below 30 years old. So the idea for echo screening is to identify early the disease in order to have appropriate treatment. But on the other hand, you should see the valvular damage um, to stratify the risk of patients and guide the treatment. In the context of subclinical disease, we have different types of echocardiographic techniques that have been evolving the last, in the last years. We start like M-mode, two-dimensional Doppler strain, speckle track, and uh, three-dimensional three echo. For the screen, usually should be a, a simplified protocol with portable machines that is the most sensitive test for early disease detection. It's able to detect subclinical disease before start of symptoms or even subtle valvular abnormalities. It's very important because provide data on the epidemiology of the disease and guide health priorities and identify patients at risk of progression. Those who have carditis or have at least mild valvular disease are at risk for progression to severe disease that end up in need for valvular replacement. In this is a um, landmark study show the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease compared to clinical examination for cardiologists with training in auscultation compared to echo screening. You can see the prevalence is much higher with echo screen compared to clinical examination. Should be like 10 times higher. 
Uh, after this study, we've echo screened um, the scientific community, raise awareness related to rheumatic heart disease. That's so important to recognize the early disease stage to change the natural history of this disease. For a screen, it's very important to have a portable echo devices to go to remote areas, especially in endemic countries. And this is a portable echo machine, the VVT IQ, and this ultra portable echo machine that allows to go in anywhere. And we are involved in this PROVAR study. This is a pro program for early diagnosis of rheumatic heart disease. We started a study uh, related to the prevalence of the disease, screen school, and also primary care centers. It's very important because it's easy to use for non-physicians just to have a remote online training with, let's see. with some terminology position just to say anterior and posterior and some multiple choice question for training and um, different access view to see the orientation of the heart and the valves. This is an example of, of patients that undergo to echo screen. It's an um, image of the echo par external long axis view. You can see left atrium, left ventricle, aortic, aortic valve, and in right ventricle. You can see the valve opens well and closes well. And you use the Doppler modality, color Doppler, to see have some regurgitation or not. You can see the valve close well, and not allow the regurgitation come from the left ventricle to the left atrium. So it's a normal echo screen. You can rule out rheumatic heart disease based on this um, protocol. And this is another example of an um, 11 years old boy that came from the school to screen. You can see here left atrium and left ventricle and the valve thickness with some restriction of the anterior leaflet is not open well, should open close to the septum. It is a marker of chronic rheumatic heart disease and also have some thickness of the aortic valve. And this other case here in echocardiogram, fourth chamber view, you can see left ventricle and left atrium, you can, in this blue jet comes into the left atrium, show that the valve is not closed well and has a regurgitant flow in this way. And also not open well, it's in rheumatic heart disease, is a characteristic picture, it's a double lesion. The valve is not open well, but not closed well. And can also affect the aortic valve. In this other case here, you can see the mitral valve is quite normal, open and closed well. But on the other hand, the tips of the aortic valve can be thickening with some restriction. It's this subtle um, abnormalities, but it means that um, this patient are is at risk for progression to severe disease. And it's very important to see the morphology of the valve, but also the function of the valve. In this image, you use the color Doppler. You can see the valve, the blue jet in diastole. That means that the flow comes from the aortic to the left ventricle. And means that the valve has insufficiency and have a volume overload to the left ventricle. And this simplified protocol helps us in the daily practice. 
And this is the case of rheumatic heart disease patients that we just after our physical examination, we see well the valves to see if the patients are progressing with heart failure or not. We have complete the physical examination with this echo screen. And the way to do this program is we have a Hospital das Clinicas um, Echo Central Core Lab for reading and interpretation. And this is have an educational process to allow the communities, the children, that's very important to have an echo screen done and the device in the school or primary care center. And they send all the images for the cloud system in, via telemedicine for hospital das clinicas. Usually we have a collaboration with the Children National Hospital and we share the reading and interpretation of images. And we select from the school or out in also for primary care center to come to get the echo screen done. And have some material for community be aware of the program that early, early prevention save lives, how important it is, even uh, they are asymptomatic, have no evidence of heart disease. And we have this program that includes the two cities, the north of Minas Gerais, Montes Claros and Bocaiúva, and also Nova Lima. We try to recruit in more vulnerable areas, in endemic areas, rural areas, that uh, the population have most benefit from it. And now I artificial intelligence to allow to analyze the images quite quickly and use spatial stream and temporal stream. This requires a high volume of images to training the machine to allow to recognize the main, the major abnormalities, that is mitral regurgitation and aortic regurgitation, which one is physiological or which ones is pathological related to the valve dysfunction. We have a collaboration in Africa and Uganda, so we have some echoes uh, performed there that allowed to train the machine in different, uh, with different populations. And this is having a special uh, activation map and also a temporal activation map. It is a research uh, going on. And echo screens is also is important to improve access to limited uh, regions. In Montes Claros, in north of Minas Gerais, uh, there has been an increment of echo requests by the physician at the primary care center. But on the other hand, there is no increase in availability in the public health system. So the physician uh, order the echo, but they have no one to do, to do the echo. So the idea, uh, the growing wait, waiting lines and the patients waiting two, three years for have an echo done. So the mortality during the wait lines can be higher as 4%. So our strategy with these studies to select important clinical data plus echo screen to identify those patients that need a prioritization in the lines to incremental accuracy for predicting those who have cardiovascular disease. This is very important because based on a clinical questionnaire, we, select, we divide the patients in, into three groups, low, intermediate risk, and high risk. Those in intermediate risk should go to the echo screen, and the echo screen are able to rule out severe disease or major cardiovascular abnormalities. So we try to uh, short the waiting lines for echo using echo screen. On the other hand, those with high risk should go, should go direct refer for a cardiology center and have a full echo done. And 
also we analyze some different types of studies using like a computer-based training uh, to treat echocardiography identification of rheumatic heart disease to non expert using and comparison between different strategies of rheumatic heart disease echocardiography scheme in Brazil uh, using uh, records in the school or also in primary care centers. An integration of echo screen by non physician in remote reading in primary care centers is important because it's not child, but elderly and adults, uh, patients have undiagnosed heart disease. And for those who have established valvular lesions, a new echo modality, three dimensional echo, uh, allows to quantify the severity of the disease, especially to define the therapeutic strategy and guide patient management. This is an example of transesophageal echo. And in the, the zoom of the mitral valve, we can see the mitral valve and a small orifice because a severe mitral valve stenosis in this case. And here is our orifice valve, left eighth appendix. It's the zoom, 3D zoom of the mitral valve. In this case, the patient uh, should benefit for percutaneous intervention that allows to put the catheter that cross the right atrium, the inter atrial septum, and go to the mitral valve with the balloon and insufflate the balloon to relieve the mitral valve obstruction. This is the pre and post procedure with the severe mitral valve, and after the balloon inflation, we increase the mitral valve air and open both commissure is the letter of the valve. This is the fluoroscopy, that kind of procedure, which is the mitral valve uh, small orifice at this level. If infl inflation the balloon, we uh, change the severe mitral stenosis to a mild mitral stenosis. And this 3D allow us to see more anatomical details of the valve. We can see if you open the central orifice, but in this case here, we can see the commissure that increase the both anatomical orifice and also the effect orifice, the blow, the blows flow uh, came across this um, letter of the valve that is the commissure that are open. And you, and you can analyze well the morphology of the valve in terms of calcification, fibrosis, asymmetry of the commissure. You can see in this case here, the mitral valve or if it's a severe mitral stenosis and have a thickening of this commissure, calcification here, small calcium here, and this is, is a patient that is relatively high risk for the procedure because the, the pattern of valve involvement by the rheumatic process. This is the valve that you will see by transesophageal three-dimensional echo. You can see from the left to the from the left ventricle to the left atrium. You can see like um anterior lift and posterior lift and the severe mitral stenosis. That's a typical lesion uh, of rheumatic heart disease. And some complications related to the valve disease is like a thrombus, a clot inside the left atrium. This is a large thrombus. These patients are at risk for stroke and embolic events. In this case, you have a contraindication for the percutaneous procedure it should go to surgery for valve replacement and remove this clot inside the left atrium. And after the percutaneous procedure, you can have some complications related to leaflet disruption or tear. In this example here, 
We have a mitral valve after the procedure. You can see a um, lesion here, a rupture of the posterior leaflet with the, uh, the valve is open. And here, with the, when the valve is closed, you can see uh, this leaflet tear. That's very important because we want, when we detect this type of complication, we should be aware of the high risk of, of patients should come to the surgery as soon as possible, like an urgent procedure. This other example here, after the one balloon inflation, you can see anterior leaf and posterior leaf with a tear, exactly at the middle of the posterior leaflet. Is usually uh, cause a severe mitral regurgitation that is, is not well tolerated and the patient should refer for surgery um, hours after the procedure. And this is an example when the patient comes to the open in the operation room, you can see by the 3D the tear of the leaflet. And during the surgery, you can see exactly the point that has a rupture of the valve tissue. It is very interesting study with uh, collaboration with Professor Valderes that we analyze what's happened with the valve tissue in those cases who have a rupture during the percutaneous balloon valve loplasty. So this in the, the 3D uh, image that he exact the point of the leaflet tear here, and this is, we can see here. And we analyze when these patients go to surgery, valve replacement, we use the valve tissue to analyze what happened with this tissue. This is the college five orientation, and the those who have no, in the control group, without leaflet tear, compared to those those with leaflet tear. This is quite similar. This is the signal of the, the leaflets, but when you see the pattern of collagy orientation, you can see thickening of the fibers here, and the greens and in yellow here, like a soft tissue. So it's a, a kind of thickening tissue with a thin tissue. This irregular, this irregular pattern of the tissue distribution of collagen fiber, fibers, it's an underlying condition that predisposes to lift the rupture during the balloon inflation. This is a kind of uh, inflammatory process uh, that um, causes this lead or uh, this fiber, uh, collagen fiber orientation at the end. And we, by 3D echo, we are allowed to reconstruction the image of the valve. In this example here, we can measure the valve annulus, valve leaf, this is the, the distance of the annulus to the leaf, the stipis, the annulus, and we are able to see such uh, details of the valve. You can see the doming, the valve height, and the orifice if regular or irregular, and it, it provides us a lot of parameters that um, guide the best strategy for patient treatment. If you can preserve or repair this valve or should go to valve replacement. It's all this type of measurements, more than 20 parameters that we are able to acquire based on this reconstruction of the valve. And this other interesting study is not uh, seeing just the valve, but the cardiac chambers uh, that are also affected by the valve lesion. In this study, in this study uh, looking at left atrial shape, in patients with mit rheumatic mitral stenosis, so the anatomical shape uh, increase based on anatomical shape. We are the the possibility of have high risk of stroke or other embolic events. This is a control group. This is two patients with mitral stenosis. 
But if the left A to increase in the ellipsoidal form, in, the, in this shape, more elliptical compared to a more spherical shape, uh, the risk of stroke increase. Because in this spherical shape has a stagnant blow, um, blood flow in the lateral of the atrium that predispose to thrombus formation and embolic events. On the other hand, this more laminar flow in this type of left A2 enlargement. Although they are they similar, this, is, this spherical shape has a high risk of stroke. That is a um, major complication of rheumatic heart disease. And based on the reconstruction of these images, we can see here is the format of the left H. This is more elliptical, and this is a spherical shape that you can see a broad stages in this and risk of clot formation and then embolization for the brain or other um, systemic embolism. And another echo techniques is a speckle track strain. This is a, a new technique to assess myocardial function. Uh, the green points are speck, uh, speckles that move to the one, to the other part. This movement displacement is a measurement of the uh, fiber contractility. If they go to the old location, to the new location. If they move, the, 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 the distance is a direct measurement of myocardial contractility. And it is, is a, an objective, is a way to quantify each um, segment uh, function. If you have like a yellow segment and a base of the septum, you can measure the apex of the septum and always the segment to have an idea if the global function, but also segmental regional uh, ventricular function. And is a less subjective way of measurement. You can see, you measure, and after you measure, you can see the number of each segment of contraction and the curves of the, to see if the contractions in the direct way, you have the number of like 70.4. It means that uh, the, the average of the all these segments contractility. This is a longitudinal strain that measure the longitudinal contraction of the left ventricle, but we can also radial strain that contract the radial form. And also this, uh, each segment has a number to see if it contracts well or not. And here is the same. You have the, the references values are quite different, but the idea is this contraction is positive one because this starts on the large and contraction squeeze the volume and decrease the, the diameter of the left ventricle. Speckle track stains is a way to detect in mitral stenosis, in rheumatic heart stenosis, is a way to detect a subclinical left ventricular dysfunction in patients with mitral stenosis. Because it's before the, the patient have symptoms and also before the conventional echo with left ventricle ejection fraction, uh, chains. So it's a, it's a sensitive, uh, sensitive, uh, sensitive tool to detect subclinical dysfunction or early myocardial contractility abnormalities. And more recently, uh, they, stood, they study of left atrial function by speckle tract strain in these patients. We have a project that's uh, going on that you analyze the left atrial function uh, based on this, you know, have different types of left atrial function. You can see a uh, contractility function, reserve function, and conduction function. 
this is, is very important because the left atrium is the, the source of thrombus or a risk for embolic events in the setting of rheumatic mitral stenosis. And the risk for developing atrial arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation is based on this contractility of the left atrium. So in summary, heart disease accounts for high uh, morbidity and mortality in Brazil. The screen echo is with remote interpretation is a strategy to deliver cardiovascular care to low resources areas. Early diagnosis is essential to prevent complications and mortality. New echocardiographic techniques allows for better assessment of rheumatic heart disease severity. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for great talk, great data. Um, it's it, apparently it's it seems to be hard to train uh, people uh, to perform echo, right? Yes, yes. For screens is not too hard, too difficult, but for new techniques like speckle track strain and 3D, yes, yes. And the, and the need for people doing this is it, it urges, right? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, questions for Maria do Carmo. There is one here. Um, Maria do Carmo, in the follow-up, in the follow-up, are there scan, scan, the are there scars after the procedure? Yes, in the follow-up of the patients, after like a tear of the leaflets or some type of complications. Should be. <laughs> yes. Yes, and also for the, the, the procedure without complication, because the procedures like the balloon uh, relieve the obstruction, but the, it's a palliative treatment. The valve, the tissue valve is, is, a, is a sick tissue. It's related, it's not a normal valve. It has an inflammatory rheumatic process and the scar of the tissue. So the patient should a follow-up in our outpatient clinic. Usually they are event-free like from 10 years and we, if you need again we can do a repeat, redo the procedure or usually uh, at like 50, 60 years old you usually go to valve replacement at the late disease stage. Mm -hmm. And another question is, how is the epidemi epidemiology of adult non-diagnosed RHD? Yeah, I think because it's, it's hard to answer because is echo screening, large program of echo screen, um, raise the awareness that is under diagnosis rheumatic heart disease. So I think we, we think that in the, the remedy trial that takes in Africa show that the majority of rheumatic heart disease patients came in the late disease stage. So we suppose that if you have a possibility to have a large screen program, we will see higher prevalence of rheumatic heart disease that we see now perhaps with under um, uh, detected. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Ah. Are there studies with populations without antibiotic use, either, either from sparse medical care or by homeopathic or other alternative health approach? Yes, I think the homeopathic or I, I, I don't know, but antibiotics, especially penic penicillin, is decrease the number of recurrence of acute rheumatic fever, decrease the number of new episodes, 
and it has impact directly in valvular disease progression. So it's very important to identify those who have mild disease and start a prophylaxis to prevent progression to late disease. But also the, the uh, house condition, health care, uh, all this is very important to, to be aware that contributes to high burden of rheumatic heart disease in low-income countries. Thank you, Valeria, for all your questions. Um, I was wondering about this, this 3D echo because it gives you a very nice uh, view and uh, very nice images, how accessible they are. Oh, this is a very interesting question. Yes, the 3D is not, it's, it's expensive machine. It should be a software that we analyze. Um, it's not a live 3D, we analyze after, we acquire the image and spend time analyzing uh, to reconstruct the images. Uh, but, it's, it's, but on the other hand, it's very important in this, in the, to manage mitral valve disease, okay? because we analyze details of anatomical feature of the valve. But it's actually spend time in, in, in private hospital. Usually people don't care too much because they spend too much time and not pay more for this. Mm -hmm. But in research settings, it's very interesting. We spend mm -hmm. like one hour for each transesophageal 2D echo. Mm -hmm. And we an acquire and go just offline and uh, analyze the images with the software. And the software to analyze the images also expensive. Mm -hmm. But we try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. Uh, one thing that we learned from this workshop, everything that is 3D <laughs> requires very expensive uh, softwares, time, time consuming analyze, analysis and things like that. It doesn't matter if it's echo, it's uh, electromicroscopy, mm -hmm. it's fluorescent spectroscopy, but it's, 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 it's common to all of this. Um, any more, any questions? Um, Maria do Carmo, thank you so much. It was really nice meeting you and uh, congratulations in your work. Uh, I hope uh, I hope we're gonna have the opportunity to meet in person at some point. Yes, thank you so much for the invitation. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you always to be here. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> So with this uh, great talk, we are gonna finish our workshop. I hope you all uh, enjoyed it.